Foster in behind here now, there's options in the box. Gustavo! Gustavo is it 2-0! Second, will it be now towards the back post of Costa? They have it! The substitute to Shaw Yu Sun! And I'm joined this week by our regular co host Andrew Farrell. Hello, Andrew. Hi, Matthew. How's it going? You well? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, yeah, happy. Nice, nice little break from K League uh, for the next whatever week and a bit. So, um, looking forward to the internationals as well. It's just there's a bit of a there's a bit of a lull when this happens, but uh, mm -hmm. I think I, I wrote about this on the website. They do take the national team really seriously over here, whereas at home it seems anytime there's international break, people seem to get depressed. But uh, like as we saw with the fixture release and stuff. Um, just can't wait to get back for the last the last few months of the season. Indeed. And uh, also, today we have uh, making his K-League United podcast return for reasons that will soon become very apparent. All the way from Pattaya, Thailand, it's Michael Redmond. Welcome back, Michael. Well, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, it's great to be back. Um, I'm still alive, for those who may have asked them. <laughs> still, still in Thailand. I've not been deported, not been arrested yet, so things are going well. And uh, we're here today to talk about... <laughs> The K League Two. Talking about the K League Two, but you have been taking in some Thai Premier League, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Thai League Two. Thai League oh, Two. Thai League Two. I apologise. Yes, the arrogant Dolphins for Thai United, which is um, <laughs> uh, let's just say the fans are ten times the atmosphere of Seoul Eland, but the football is ten times less. So you know, equilibrium is out, yin and out, yin and yang. Um, <laughs> the, the the fan passion is great, but the football is is a lot to be desired for. Well, fortunately, we might be saving you today because, as uh, pe as people may be watching this, if if well, first of all, if you are watching this, it does mean we've actually gone ahead and published it because we are in some new surroundings. <laughs> if you're watching it, uh, the producers of this podcast uh, have us testing out some new software, so do bear with us if it goes uh, inevitably wrong. Uh, yeah, but. Um, well, from inevitably going wrong somewhere towards the end of this podcast to uh, inevitably going wrong on the pitch, we're going to be no doubt discussing Busan Eye Park as well as plenty of other teams as we look at the title contenders for K-League 2. Uh, we're going to be going through eight teams uh, because somehow there are eight teams still in contention for promotion as we enter the final straight in this incredible K-League 2 promotion race. Um for people who've been listening to the last couple of episodes, they may know the format by now. Uh, so the format is we're going to be going through each team uh, three minutes, give or take. <laughs> Usually a lot of take. <laughs> we're going to be trying. We're going to be trying our best. Three minutes. Uh, we're going to be going through each team. We're going to be looking at the story so far in 2024, uh, the recent form, uh, who's in charge and how they've been doing, and who is the player to watch uh, for these last five games as we hit the crunch period of this season. Uh, and then we're going to go for a simple up or staying down as our predictions. No more probabilities. Uh, they are out the window um, because they were too confusing. So just want to know <laughs> up, down, and we'll give each one of us maybe because Oasis tickets are still on sale. Well, not, not yet, actually, in Korea. But anyway, moving on. Uh, from that clunky transition into a team that has ugh, been somewhat in a bit of a clunky transition from a team that wasn't doing very well at the beginning of the season to a team that now suddenly is beating everybody and has made it into contention for this podcast. Uh, Gimpo FC, last year's playoff finalists, uh, this year's playoff hopefulists, and we're not going to talk about them, despite our introductions. We have Paul with his view on the team. So, take it away, Paul. Yes, indeed. Sitting in eighth place is Gimpo FC. They began the season with eight matches away from home on account of work being done to the stadium. They lost their first home game in May and then had three more matches on the road. So, one home game in 12 to start the new season. 
So the fact that they are only three points behind the playoffs, despite starting the season with one hand tied behind their back, essentially, is credit to the players and the manager. We thought then that with basically the second half of the season at home, Gimpo would then climb the table and also have a second season in the playoffs. It's not quite been as simple as that. They went on a run of eight games without a win from late June to mid-August and have only recently really recovered from that. They'll end the season with two home games, two away, and are at home on the final day. Uh, as for their most recent form, back-to-back losses to Anyang and Buchon were then followed up with a draw and two wins, including a 2-0 away win with 10 men to Seoul Eland, and then a 3-0 home win against Chungnam Asan, two teams that are chasing automatic promotion. Recent form is good, and you could say they found form at the right time. As for their manager, Ko jong I would give him a six, a good six or a low seven, just because of that tricky period in the summer. I think raised expectations from last season may have been a bit of a hindrance for them. Um, most important player for the games ahead, Gimpo have a very strong forward line, and you could probably take your pick, but it's hard to look past K-League United podcast favourite, Leonard Planner. Eight goals and five assists from him this season. And he's also perhaps the most consistent more consistent than Luis Mina and Bruno Paraiba in particular. So as for their chances of going up, um, to give a percentage between 5 and 10 at best, um, even if they do reach the playoffs, it's very, very unlikely that they will go up. It's a down for me. They they have the, you know, in their last four matches, they have Chungbuk Chongju away, the Blue Wings at home, Songnam away, and then they are at home to Tronan City, three teams below them in the table. So, it's in their hands, you could say, but very, very unlikely. All right, that was Paul Neat there giving his view on Gimpo FC. Uh, we are actually going to hear from two of Gimpo FC's players from the mix zone, uh, but before we do, I think we should probably give our first verdicts of the night. So, quite simple, going up or staying down. Uh, Michael, welcome back to the pod, obviously, so I'm going to let you go first. Well, there has to be a slight disclaimer for today, doesn't there? I'm going to completely down every single team apart from Sol Eland, so I'm just going to say down. Um, no, I, I, I really don't know, and I've been follow, I have been following the K-League too religiously this year, even though I'm in a different country. It's amazing how we're talking about eight different teams here now at the moment. Um, I think they're still going to stay down, though. I think they're just going to slip up towards the end and not make, not make a playoff place. Andrew? Uh, at worst, I have them as maybe. I think they'll make the playoffs. And I think, as Paul was saying there, they probably have the best attacking unit in the entire uh, league in KD2. Uh, they need to finish third just to avoid the nonsense of the playoffs, whereby they have to, they can't afford any draws um, from here on in. But I think if, if Gimpo somehow get themselves into a one-on-one battle with a K-League 1 team. Uh, the teams that are down at the bottom of K-League 1, I give them a 50-50 chance of going up. Um, it's just a matter of getting into the top uh, five at the moment. It sounds weird to say that because they're eight, seventh or eighth at the moment, but I think if they can sneak into the playoffs with the players that they have, a good end to the season, I, I'll give them a maybe. I give them a percentage much higher than, than Paul's, close enough to a 50%. All right. Well, I'm just going to say... No. <laughs> um, they're staying <laughs> down. And, uh, well, Andrew's used his maybe already. So, uh, hard luck, Andrew. You've got to be defi- definitive on your next few choices. Uh, but while you ponder those and re- recalibrate for the next seven teams, I am going to play your mix zone interviews because you managed to catch up with Connor Chapman and Leonard Palana. So, uh, well, let's listen to how it went. Hi, Gimpo FC have beaten Chung Namasa and 3 0 in Salta this afternoon. We're joined by a very happy Connor Chapman. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, three goals, three points, none conceded. Great for a defender as well. Could have been four. There was a bit of a mix up, I guess, with the penalty thing at the end, but you must be delighted. Yeah, I think last time you come out here, um, we were sort of in a place at Gimpo where, you know, I come in halfway through the season. I think Bruno. Uh, you know, his confidence wasn't what it is right now. So I think we're sort of finding our feet and we were sort of uh, finding how to be successful. And I said, I said to you, like, as long as we're patient with that, you know, the results will come. And 
it's perfect timing for us. You know, like you want to be winning games coming to the end of the season. I think you want to have momentum. You know, we've got three foreigners up front that are yeah. all playing really well at the moment. So for other teams, it's it's hard for them. Like you know, they've they've got to worry about three top players up there now. And Bruno's started scoring. So uh, yeah, for us, big confidence going into the break. And um, you know, we've got four games left. So it's just up to us to win. Yeah, as we know, like K-League 2 is so unpredictable as well. You just need to go on a little bit of form and yeah. suddenly you start climbing up the table. As you said, there's a break now. It's a great time to have a break. And then when you come back, it's Chung Nam, uh, Ch- uh, Chungju away, who are managerless at the moment. Yeah. So it's hard to know how that will work out, but you said just four games to go. But I'd imagine confidence is really, really high. It is, and I think if you look at the, the games that we've recently played, you know, they're the tougher teams. Uh, I think we, we played... You know, Asan today was second. We versed uh, Solidan last week, who were and second or third. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so getting wins against them is key. Yeah. And I think we've got three teams below us in the last four games. Yeah. Um, so for us, yeah, we've just got to hope that other results go our way as well. And if we're winning, then we'll, as you said, we'll jump up the ladder. Happy with your own form? Yeah, I think it's good. I think um, I sort of finished my season in Australia went away for holidays for a few weeks and then got called to Gimpo. So in between, it was probably, you know, four or five weeks where I didn't actually play a game. Yeah. Um, sort of come in, had to play straight away, but I feel I feel now going into the end of the season that, you know, I'm fit, I'm sharp. Uh, I've got a good connection with the, the defenders, the coach now as well. So, um, yeah, it's positive going to the end of the season. Yeah, wish you all the best with the rest of the season. Thank you. Um, more reaction now to Gimpo's 3-0 win over Chungnam FC, Chungnam Asan FC. Uh, the three points uh, propelled Gimpo up the table and firmly into the playoff picture. Delighted to say that Leonard Plana is back to talk to us on K-League United. Welcome back, how are you? Thank you, all good, good to see you again. Yeah, it was a great win today. Yeah, it was a good win, it was a good win. We deserve this win today. Yeah. We had a good plan for the game and uh, happy to take three points. Yeah, you, you mentioned before we came on about the manager had some good tactics too because Chungnam, Chungnam Asan were first or second. They could have gone first with a win here today. So this is not the Asan that we've seen in the last few years in K-League. So w- what did the manager see about the team that you thought you'd go out there and, and play so well against them? No, we, we know that they, was, uh, they are good to, to keep the ball and try to play and try to find these uh, middle passes. But... Uh, Today we was waiting them, you know, mm. we wait them and then I think we create a lot of chances today. So we was, uh, we was going for the counter-attacks today. So yeah, this was uh, our plan. The form is really good now. Um, that's two wins on the, the trot. I think they've only lost two or something in the last 11 odd games. There's a break now because of the international games. You must be feeling really good. No, we feel uh, we feel good. We feel good now. Also, as a team, against this, uh, we win against Seoul Liland with one man down. We play yeah. as a team, you know. And now we go in here today. We know it was a very important game also today. So we will catch. We will uh, we'll try to catch the the playoff, you know. And uh, we're not going to give up until the end. So we just need to be focused now. And now it's international break, so we need to rest good and uh, make good training after. We have Chonjo away, I think so. Yeah. I was surprised by how well Gimpo played today because I saw Anyang lose a man and then struggle badly against Seoul Ilan. They lost the game. So when you had a man sent off as well and then scored two goals after, I just thought that today's game was going to be hard, especially against a good team. But I was surprised by just how brilliant Gimpo played. Uh, that must have been one of these things that the, the players are talking about in the change room afterwards, just how well they went on. Yeah, we talk, we talk, uh, especially after this game against Ulian. We talk, we talk a lot, like how, uh, how also the offensive players was defending, you know. And uh, we need to, when it's like this, when it's red card, of course, we we need to play for a team, you know. And yeah. uh, if we want to go to playoffs, so we need to play like this you know, because this league it's hard, you know. And uh, <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to be focused every time, you know. Look, we wish you all the best with the, the playoff uh, push and hopefully we'll see you again before the end of the Thank season. Thank you so much and good to see you, as Thank always. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Connor Chapman and Leonard Palana there. And if you were watching this on Patreon, 
and you saw the technical difficulties where you can listen to the full clips on the podcast and the uh, potentially edited version that might be on YouTube. And if you want to hear even more from both of them, well, if you are watching this on Patreon, you've already heard both of them, the full-length interviews, but we will be releasing those as well over the international break so you can hear all of their thoughts as Gimpo return to form. Uh, but speaking of return to form, we're going to move quickly on, gentlemen, uh, because we have a lot of teams to get through. And, uh, well, I'm not going to ask any of you to speak. I don't even know why I've invited you to lo- along, because it's Paul again. Uh, Paul is going to be talking <laughs> about Pujon FC 1995. So take it away, Paul. Righty, Bouchon FC 1995. The perennial playoff bridesmaid sits seventh in K League 2, three points behind the top five. It's been an up and down season for them, in truth, with clusters of decent performances uh, and results scattered throughout the season, but punctuated by dips in form, the odd loss here and there. Only once this season have Bouchon won three on the bounce, and only once have they put back together back to back wins, and that was back in March. Their most recent form, um, at least until two rounds ago, was what had given them a chance of reaching the playoffs, but a run of four wins and a draw from five was then followed up with a loss and a draw in their last two against teams that were out of form as well, in truth, and and were there for the taking in Dronam Dragons and Chungbuk Chungju. Buchan are at a very critical juncture with five games to go. As for their manager, uh, Lee Young-min, probably a six out of ten at best, and that would be probably very much glass half full. Buchan, bang average in terms of their goal score tally and where they rank in the table in that regard. And the manager has probably had to rely on Rodrigo Bassani to dig them out of games. Most important player for the games ahead. Well, that brings me on to Bassani. He signed from the Blue Wings over the winter. His goals are low and have earned seven points in, in sort of games that have been tight, either from losing positions or turning draws into win. And that includes late equalizers or winners. Butran have lost only twice when he scored or assisted. As for their chances of going up, very, very slim. I would say they're going to stay down another season in K League 2 for them. They have work to do just to get into the playoffs, and therefore it'll be a miracle if they were to then go and beat a K League 2 team ranked above them away from home in the playoffs, if it does come to that, and then a K League 1 team over two legs. So 5% chance, but with five games to go, one more than Gimpo and... Thank you, Paul, for your thoughts there on Buchan. Andrew, how do you see uh, it going for Bruton? Are they going up to K-League 1 or is it uh, another... They are absolutely staying down. Um, they probably have the best player in the league in Rodrigo Vasani, but he's not enough to propel them to K-League 1. So if they make the playoffs, they're probably going out in the first round. Fair enough. Michael, Bruton, before Dan. Just staying down. I, I could only see them at most sneak in, in the last position in the playoffs. But as Andrew said, it did, they're going to go on the first round. They just... <laughs> Don't seem to cut above the people, the teams above them. To be completely honest, fair enough. And yeah, I think I'll be sticking with down because what is K League Two without Bouton FC nineteen ninety five? It's unthinkable. Uh, so we, on that, we're going to move straight up to a team that we thought would be unthinkable to be found in K League Two. I've just worked my way around that sentence. There it was a bit more difficult than I expected. Uh, but Andrew. You are going to be leading us through this one. 2-1 Blue Wings, they find themselves a few games left and outside of the playoffs. Tell us about them. Yeah, that's right. It's been a very poor season for the Suwon Blue Wings since the relegation to K-League 2 in December. Fancied by Vanny, including myself, to earn an immediate promotion back to top flight. Suwon started brightly and briefly led the league in April on the Yom Gi-hun. However, after a huge win in Anyang, Suwon embarked on a five-game losing streak which ended the legendary Yom stint in charge of the club. Uh, Byung Sung Wan took charge of his first game in June, overseeing a slight improvement in form. Suwon have stopped losing games, or Suwon had stopped losing games, but they found wins very hard to come by. That was until back-to-back victories against Anyang and Jonam Dragons uh, ignited a late championship uh, start, I guess. But Byung's team have collected just eight points from possible 21 since Worryingly, they've conceded six. They conceded the first in six of the last seven games, the sort of form that you do not associate with a playoff team. The Blue Wings have the youngest squad in the division, and with certain players like Pak Sung Su, there's a clear sense of building for the future. But a lot of the established players have been bitterly disappointing. Kimbo Gyeong looks completely disinterested. Lee Jung Sung has a very annoying habit of switching off and tracking back, allowing opposition players to waltz into the box 
unmarked and score. They have regularly chopped and changed their center backs, but no matter who they pick, the likes of Bruno, Achan and City FC, and other big men in this division have routinely bullied Suwon's rear guard. And Fejal Mulic, as fun as he is to watch, just misses far too many chances. Recent form, the Blue Wings did receive a much-needed boost when they beat Anyang for the third time this season before the break. Peter McCrillis's late winner will keep the Wolves at bay for another week. But Buchan to face after the break is absolutely vital to win. The manager rating, well, I got, I, I've said this on the podcast before, from Anyang to John Am, from Gimpo to Buchan, pretty much everywhere I've been so far this season, I've listened to club officials tell me how wonderful Byung Sung Wan is, but for me, the jury is still out. There have been some improvements since Yom Gi Hun walked away, but progress has been hampered by a run of disappointing results in the autumn. So what's not for conceding first in every game doesn't reflect well in the coach. Once is understandable, twice is perhaps a little bit weird, but six games in a row, it just makes you wonder what they're doing in training every day. I'd give Beyond a 6 out of 10. The most important player so far, Yi Xiong has had uh, a decent a decent spell since he joined from bitter rivals FC Seoul on loan. The squad has a lot of depth, but everything is like-for-like like replacement. The only exception is right back. Hensley has played more games than any other player in blue this season. However, it is their captain and goalkeeper, Yang Yun Mo, who remains Suwon's most valuable player. The keeper has endured two injury spells in 2024. If he goes down again, I reckon promotion will be over. Prediction for the season. Uh, I'll be honest, I give Suwon a 10% chance of promotion. Even if they make the playoffs, which isn't a guarantee, they won't finish third meaning that they have to win games on the road and then go and beat a K-League 1 team. I say this with absolute confidence. The Blue Wings will be staying down this year. There we go. Blue Wings staying down this year. Wow. Well, Michael, do you agree with that assessment? Well, any team that gets nine points, deducted often from Seoul, Elan deserve to stay down in the K-League too. I just want to get a point out, so one or three games against two on Blue Wings this year. Um, it's quite interesting to see the downfall of two on Blue Wings. Uh, as, as Andrew said earlier, you would expect them to go straight up with minimal losses, but they're sat lingering in sixth place. Now, I, I think they are going to get a playoff spot because it's two on and two on to seem to always get something out of nothing. But it's not been the Kaylee two team of five, six, seven, eight years ago. Or we know because it's Kaylee two, they've been poor for what it is. For even being in the Kaylee two, they've been poor. But uh, the teams are on the point laughing at them because, as as he said, it should be first. But here we are now, them sat in sixth. Yeah, and um, it's difficult to disagree because I, I I think um, yeah they have underperformed. It, there are some interesting stats I've picked up um, on them just to quickly perhaps change your mind. I don't know. They've got the highest XG in the league, the third lowest expected goals against as well. Uh, they've got the most shots in the league. Uh, they are, have got the most touches in the penalty area in the league. They are the third highest for expected points, but all those stats don't mean anything in a real league table. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the shooting one especially I mean I've, I've seen a lot of Blue Wings games this season and often they'll have 21 shots on goal 4 on target and it's just, it's 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 tedious watching them play actually mm -hmm. um, so there are a lot of shots there are a lot of shots on goal they, I'm, I'm not sure what what sort of percentage of, the, of those tend to be on target they tend to just shoot from distance a lot um, you know just shots from outside the box but uh, I also find them really hard to watch. It's really difficult to watch. Boring, uh, to be honest. To be brutally honest with you, so like some of those stats look good, but as you said, like they're in six, so like really, yeah. who cares if you can't put the ball in the back of the net? They've also got the youngest team in the league, two on, on yeah. Match. But I, don't, I think maybe that shows on the pitch the inexperience. Maybe they've gone too young. Perhaps it is quite a rebuild, perhaps for them. But um, ultimately, they're six. They're not in the promotion places they're just uh, outside of them i mean it's not difficult for them to get in them if they can get their act together but i i actually put them as the maybe I, they're my maybe choice because they are sue one and they do sue one things in knockout football didn't do it last year didn't get a chance this year in all fairness um, but who knows uh, i think if they get in the playoffs they could be a difficult team for anybody to verse uh but we're going to keep moving up the table now and speaking of difficult teams that are always feel like they should be in the playoff positions. It's uh, John Nam Dragons. And uh, no, it's not. Yes, it is. 
<laughs> I am looking at different tables from different weeks because it changes so much. Uh, I just had to make sure that they were definitely fifth. John Nam Dragons are in fifth, though. They are just sitting there, just within the playoff positions. And, uh, well, they are a one of a number of previous K1 staples, finding themselves having now spent a bit too long in K-League 2. Uh, they're having another stab at qualifying for the playoffs once more with the hope of not agonisingly missing out once again. Yi Chong Kwan continues to build on a team of promise from last season, one with plenty of individual awards, but not too much in terms of on-field glory. John Nam have been part of the promotion discussion for the majority of the season, though, with it only really coming into question in recent weeks after seven games winless, which included five losses. That which saw any threat they may have po that posed to, uh, the uh, title contenders slip away. Fortunately, though, wins against Buchan and Songnam have kept them in fifth for now, with three games out of the next five that should be deemed winnable, and another two where they must perform if they are to be taken seriously. Manager E has been using a 4 1 4 1 or a 3 5 2 for the most part, focusing heavily on possession yet attacking. Uh, in nature, they have scored the second most goals in the league, notably outperforming their XG in Italy, and the concern will be if they can continue this rather than return to expectations. They also have defensive concerns, having faced the fourth highest amount of shots, and they're the second dirtiest side in the division behind Busan, with yellows and reds galore as they scramble to defend, which may be their undoing in the final straight. Player to watch, well, Valdivia remains one of the league's best central midfielders after winning the division's MVP last year. And you'd have to think there'd be plenty of suitors should his side not make it this year. Kim Jong-min, meanwhile, remains the Dragons' biggest threat up front, third in the goal-scoring chart and second highest in the division for his aerial prowess, taking full benefit of John Nam's preference for long passes and crosses into the final third. However, are they going to go up? Are they going to go down? I just can't see it happening i still feel very much that john nam a uh, season away um the recent poor run of form i felt was more of a return to the f return to the level that they actually are and i think they are going to just miss out when it comes to the crunch so they are staying down in my opinion but i would nobody has to listen to me michael john nam up or down um, I think they're staying down to be completely honest. Um, it, it you know, I've no real problems with, with John. I'm obviously those long time listeners of the show know the teams on my hit list, and John, I'm not on that hit list at all. But it's amazing that they went down in 2018, didn't they? So, this is now like was it their sixth season, the K League 2, and they just seem to not be able to get up there. And I think it's going to be the exact same thing again this season. Have John Dragons turn to a K League 2 team? Well. Obviously, as you have, but uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, the three losses there um, last month or something. I, there's just something about John and that don't seem to tick boxes for me. Apart from the fact that they signed solely Lance Bruno from last season, this season, and he scored against us when we played against them. But do you know what I mean that that's that's always going to happen because that's solely Lance and that's what happens. But um, no, I, I think I think I think Suwon's going to leapfrog them. I don't think they're going to make it. I think Suwon's going to leapfrog them and get into the fifth spot. But that, that's my opinion. I know. Andrew, do you share that opinion? Yeah, when they were second, it felt like it was a false position for them. It never really felt like they were serious um, title contenders. Uh, not, only are they going to, not only are they going to stay down, but they're not going to make the playoffs. There we go. Well, another team that's quickly becoming a staple of K-League 2 due to their yo-yo uh, type nature or their constant flirtation with playoff failure is Busan Eye Park and we have well uh, uh, we have Michael finally here to actually yeah. uh, talk in this podcast properly Michael take it away Busan Eye Park oh, can I just do a check are we doing Busan first or are you doing Seoul Leland because Seoul are four Busan are third are they yeah <laughs> <laughs> And to uh, moving up into fourth place, a team that is in a false position because they clearly should be higher. It's uh, Michael Redmond talking about his beloved Leopards. Michael, finally. Well, stage. let me tell you something, OK? So I finally now left South Korea and Seoul on the side to play football. So that's just my look. Um, yeah, Seoul Leland this season, they've been absolutely spectacular. 
you know, they're on, what are they, on 49 points. They've got the best goal difference, but that doesn't mean anything. Never mind, they've got the best goal scored in the K-League too with 54 goals. They've been absolutely fantastic this year. There's been some minor blips, don't get me wrong. There's been times where head-in-hand moment, uh, the Gimpo 2-0 loss when they were they had 11 men against 10. It just seems like a new team. And, you know, and Kim do Kyun has just completely transformed this team into will be us at times. The way they play football, the way they've still got Osmar, who people might have said, oh, he's gone now because he's left FC Seoul. No, he's still playing absolutely fantastic football. Um, looking at the likes of Bruno Silva at the start of the season, was absolutely he was the best player in the K-League too, hands down, at the start of the season. Uh, where he's gone now, we really, really need to get him back. Uh, there's no news of injury or anything, so it's it's something in the club that he's not playing at the moment. But um, Seoul this year, I'm, I'm trying to whittle it down. I could go for hours talking about them, but it's just refreshing. It's just refreshing to finally see Seoul play football and thinking, we're not going to get battered this game or we're not going to lose this game. We've got a high chance of winning. Do you know what I mean? I said, we were talking earlier, do you know I mean? We went undefeated against Busan this season. We beat, we got nine points out of nine out of Sioux One Blue Wings. And it's like, I can finally celebrate being a Soul fan again. Uh, not again, for the first time. I've had more moments being, more memories this season alone, not even being in Korea, than I have the whole seven years prior of me, me following Soul. So I know I've taken it a bit of a personal way talking about Soul, but they've been absolutely spectacular this season compared to seasons prior. Now, looking at them themselves as a team, they've got five games left. They've got Chonam, who are sitting in ninth place. They've got Chonam Asan, so you've got Chonbuk, sorry, who are in ninth place. They've got Chungnam Asan, sorry, in second place. I'm getting mixed up here now. Then Songnam, who are dead last in 13, Gyeongnam in 12th, and then they play Jonam on the last day of the season. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. They've got two, the three below, two higher. And those who are a bit history buffs of the Kaylee too will know that in 2020 it was John and Dragons who broke Sol Leland's heart in the last game of the season. And um, I'm just hoping Lightning does not strike twice on this occasion. <laughs> I'm gonna before you tell me whether they're going up or down, Mike. I'm gonna leave you till last on that one because I, I want to I want to build up a bit of suspense for the listeners. Let's say, but Andrew, um, Sol Leland, is this the year? At the beginning of the season, in the season preview, I had them to finish third, and I still think they're going to finish third this year behind uh, Anyang and Busan, whatever order that is. Uh, there are maybe, but uh, I don't think they're going to be the team, Kaylee. Well, they are really good to watch. It, it's been a really good season watching. I've been to a good few games in Mukdong this season, and they are probably where we thought they were going to be when we did our preview at the start of the season. But it's still weird to see them actually being where they are, even if we kind of predicted that's where they would be. Um, they got a really good chance of going up if they finish third. But again, if they have to start playing away games like everybody else, they're at a massive disadvantage. I give them a maybe, but just under 50% chance of going up. Uh, maybe because it's Michael looking at me with, uh, directly into the camera, puppy dog eyes. I feel like I'm going to have to probably say they're going up but i think the problem is is like if they make the playoffs there's some big teams in k-league one and it's a problem for all the um yeah. all the teams getting promoted this this year through the playoffs that the k-league one candidates could be john book it could be john book versus Sol eland in john Jew world cup stadium for a place in k-league one which would be well well it'd be quite something michael uh but michael i, I guess like is this the are you believing or are you yeah. uh yeah going we're going up and it's an interesting point you say about the away games because Solilan have actually accumulated more points away this season than they did at home, 25 against 24. So Seoul are not scared of playing on the road. They're not scared of playing on the road in the slightest. Um, I think they're going to go up, yes. I think personally myself, in my biased opinion, they're going to finish second and they're going to play John Book. And I've made a promise to myself that I will be back in mm -hmm. Korea for the playoff second leg. So um, my bank account is screaming for Seoul to fit to lose, 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 lose. But my heart and my head is like, come on, please, boys, let's do it. It's the 10th anniversary of the club formation. I, I just want to cry in the stands in John. Do you want a Sunday? I don't know, is it a Sunday or a Saturday to play off second leg? But I just, I, I keep thinking about it. I eat, sleep, drink about Seoul Elan being in the promotion place and. I always said before going off in the tangent, all I wanted to do was Surrey land in one playoff game. And I never got the opportunity. 
I need it. I need it. Fair play. And just uh, could I say, is John Book the team you want, or the John Book or the team you think you'll get? I mean, if, oh, if you oh. could choose a team, who would you prefer to have? Oh, not a chance. It would be anyone but John Book, to be completely honest. Um, who, who, who are down there? John, I'd even take Degu. Honestly, I'd even take Degu with Sassini. I'd even take them over John Book because even though John Book are, do you know what I mean, having a terrible season, Matthew, a completely terrible, dire Manchester oh, United. I'm, I'm very aware. <laughs> um, they're, they're, they're like a seal one to just turn it on. And the fact that, uh, you know, EJ Eek was at John Book as well. And, you know, he had connections with Seoul. He was the best player for two seasons, three, two seasons in a row for Seoul. Uh, you're going to break our hearts if we go down to Jonju. But other teams around him, like, like Incheon, Dejon, I mean, we've got history beating Dejon. I mean, Dejon beat us, we beat Dejon. It's 50-50 on the day. Incheon United, we've battered them in pre-season friendlies during COVID time. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. But uh, me personally, I take Dejon. But it's going to be John Book. <laughs> Hey, you never know. You might get Jeju. You might have to pay for two flights. But uh, we'll. Uh... <laughs> we'll do you know? I don't even think you do direct flights from uh, Bangkok to Jeju, but I will be having a look. Fair enough. Uh, well, speaking of going to the beach, Michael, you're going to be covering the next team in our uh, playing uh, in our in our list because I think I've got the table right this time. Busan Eye Park. They are in third, and uh, you're going to be giving us your thoughts on them. So, Michael, Busan Eye Park. How have they been getting on? Yeah, Busan Eye Park. Uh, wow, well, you know. Undefeated in eight games now, um, to really turn it on at the time that he needs to be turned on, much to a discretion and annoyance by myself. Um, yeah, they're doing really, really well. Um, the next four games want to make a point. They're playing Anyang, then they're going to be playing Chunju, Chonam, and Buchan. Um, you might go, oh, Anyang, but we're going to touch on Anyang later about their situation. Me, in my personal opinion, something's got to give about Busan because they're playing too good and they're winning too many games going into these last four games. They're not collecting 12 points. In my personal opinion, they're not collecting 12 out of 12. So it's the teams around them. What are they going to do? Are they going to take full advantage of that or are Busan going to get off the the hook? Because I don't think they're claiming 12 points because something has got to give. Uh, Manager, Joseph Juan, as you could say, he's really got them cooking at the moment, cooking, I'm using young term voice uh, terms now, he's really got them playing really good football at the moment and I was having a look at the actual goal scorers for, for Boost at the moment you know, Bruno and Fessin are both on eight goals, and then you've got Yi Min Hyuk and Yi Dong Su both on five goals so th- the goals are not coming from one or two target men, it, it, it's a collective thing, and once again it, Boost are coming across as this collective team that just it, it, it angers me to talk about them. Do you know what I mean? Even though we're undefeated against them, it angers me to talk about them. I think they're going to finish third. <laughs> so, um, really, Busan, it, it's one of them. I, 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 you, you've asked me, like, what, what do you think of Busan, your prior to the podcast? And I can't really get my words out of them because they just seem to, they've just snuck into the playoffs where they are now. And they're just, they're, they, I feel like they're going to stay. I feel like they're going to stay there. So, I'll stop my ramble now because, as you can see, I'm getting heated talking about them at the moment. So I'll leave it there. <laughs> heated because you're cooking. Apparently, that's that's what the kids use. I, I, or, I don't <laughs> know, it's, it's, it's me living in Patty. I learned. Throw me, you've <laughs> thrown, it might be our new TikTok shape on this screen that's that's got us going. Um, with, yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to try and fit in with the kids. Um, I'm going to pass it to Andrew, and Andrew's going to tell me our uh, boost not going up or down. <laughs> Uh, sports all about momentum. They are the only team in the division that has momentum at the moment. Uh, the blockbuster game is against Anyang. I think if they win that game, they win the championship. It's that simple um, because that will bring them to a, within one point and Anyang are already in free fall at the moment. So uh, I have a sneaky suspicion that uh, Busan are going to win Kaylee 2 this season. And I think the key difference between last season is Joe Sung Wan. And I would find it pretty hilarious if he went up and Inchon went down at the same time. Yeah, there is a certain, uh, a certain irony to that, isn't there? A certain poetry. Um, but I think personally, um, oh, I, I think it's going to be playoff heartbreak again because you know it's familiarity. Um, <laughs> well known for they're well known for heartbreak in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I, I guess um, you know. I think you make a good point that they have got Anyang, and I think they're one of the few teams in the top five to actually have Anyang. Um, I'm sure we're going to be touching on their fixtures in a minute. 
uh, Andrew, but before you do, I am going to be talking about the team in second. And, well, the team in second is none other than Chung Nam Asan. <laughs> yes, I know I'm laughing. <laughs> uh, but Say that again. Second, yeah, in second we have Chung Nam Asan, Lash's 10th place finishers and perennial struggler. I can't even say the word, perennial strugglers since their switch from the police team six years ago. Under their previous manager, Park Dong Hyuk, it always felt like they were achieving more than the sum of their parts. Yet such is the contrast under the stewardship of this year's manager, Kim Hyun Suk. Questions are now asked whether Park was holding them back. That's not fair, of course. You know, Park obviously saw them through a very difficult period and he built the foundations, but Kim has turned them into genuine title contenders. And yet, and yet, it still feels like we know so little about them. They've forced themselves into Korean football conscious with a simple yet effective football that has caught so many off guard this season. Kim on Kim Hyun... Yeah. I'm that stunned, I can't even get my words out. Kim Hyun Suk, he was actually, as a player, he was the first ever player to reach the 50-50 club in K-League history. That's a little fun fact to you. But he's had a low profile since stepping into management, working in Ulsan Hyundai's coaching staff before taking on Gangnung and Ulsan High Schools from 2014 until 2021. His backroom role at As uh, Asan started in 2022 to 23 before being thrust into his first managerial role in professional football. He plays mostly a 5-4-1 or a 3-4-3, uh, one that focuses on low possession that moves the ball quickly into attacking positions. And as a result, he's built a team that gels uh, and gets a lot of shots away, placing them third highest for goals in the division. It's deserved as well. They score um, high for key passes, the second highest for through passes, third for crosses, third for touches in the box. It they rank fourth in the league for XG. Again, I'm just rattling off stats, but these are all very, very positive um, things for a team that we expected very little of coming into this season. Um, their attack serves as their best form of defence also, uh, recording the fifth lowest um, expected goals against, conceding the fewest shots in the division. Uh, they're disciplined. They don't get drawn into defensive uh, measures. They rank low for duels. They rank low for interceptions and blocks, but they do foul a fair bit, it should be said. In fact, uh, they're one of the most fouliest teams in the division. Uh, they break up a lot of attacks, but they even do this effectively. Uh, they have got the cleanest card record, or this one of the cleanest in the top three uh, in the division, despite having the highest number of fouls. They are masters of the tactical foul in a non-dangerous area to you know, regroup and uh, reset themselves up for an attack. So, yeah, it, it's, it's effective. Simple and effective football that's uh, getting them through. And one of the key players uh, that's helming this Hassan revival, or is it a revival? Is it Hassan resurgent, surgeon, or whatever? Junior Rocha is the man, though. He must be protected at all costs. He may have only scored nine. Uh, it's a couple under what he's actually expected to score. Uh, but he ranks third in highest for assists, third highest for key passes, and he's always involved in their build-up play. So you keep him quiet, you might have a chance. Will teams keep him quiet, though? Mm, uh, who knows? Because I still think Asan might do something. I don't know. Oh. I, I can't remember how many ups and downs I've used. <laughs> but I do think Asan, uh, they're going to they're gonna have a bit of fun, I think, in the playoffs. They're going to be a difficult team. But, Michael, how about you? Uh, no. No, no. The, do you know why? Because I'm thinking of Hollywood script at the moment. They have been a thorn in Seoul Eland's side since almost they changed from a police side to being Chong Nam Asan. However, in, in after the international break, the second game after the international break, we played them at Mok Dong, and hearts will break, tears will roll because Seoul Eland are going to beat them two zero, and that will going to end their situation of ending second, and Seoul are going to finish in the up in second. Um, no, jokes aside, they've had a fantastic season, and it seems like they've just come out of bloody no, come out of blooming nowhere. Don't worry, it just... don't worry, we had it. <laughs> the uh, podcast has already broken that already with a couple of interviews earlier this year, so you know, explicit content. <laughs> Sorry, guys, this uh, living in Patty, it just come out of blooming nowhere, um, where, where they are and sitting in second. Now, what people are sleeping on, there's another term for you, what yeah, people are sleeping it. on is the fact that they play 32 games where a lot of teams around them only play 31. So it is interesting to see where they are, but I think they are going to go down, not up. There we go. 
and uh, yeah, thank you for lowering our key demographic for this podcast a bit more, Michael. I, 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 not lower, I don't you know, know what's wrong. You've got you're aiming for the the C one squad to listen to this. Get the answers <laughs> in. Um, Eight to two next year. So there we go. Andrew, uh, up or down? Asan is the uh, easy, easily down. They got one of the worst away forms in the division. All four of the remaining games are away from home. Um, they're done. Their season is cooked. And I saw them last Saturday in Gimpo. It's funny that you mentioned the fouls because that was as niggly and as dirty a performance as I've seen so far this season. In that extended interview with Connor, Cha- uh, Connor Chapman, he talks about that. They had a man sent off. They, they could have had a couple of guys sent off. They were absolutely rubbish in Gimpo uh, last weekend. And Yeah, like they got the Blue Wings away and they have Soli Land away as part of their remaining four games. Um if they have to travel, because we've seen that like the only teams who have a worse away record than Chung Masan are teams that are the bottom three as it currently stands on the table. So their season is done. Their season is good, but they've had an amazing season. Do you remember as well? Like they went out in the FA Cup in the first round, they, like just the second round, or whatever. Like they went out to Jinju or something like this, and we were thinking, why are they chucking in the towel? Because they're not going to have a good season domestically. Maybe they made the right choice in the end, but they're still not going up. There we go. And, well, final team then. Uh, it's been a lot of heartbreak over the years for them, but is this the year, Andrew, that Anyang uh, make it to the top flight? Well, on the face of it, um, like this has been a remarkably successful season for Anyang. Um, they were seen as prote- uh, promotion outsiders, I would have thought, in February. We had them as the least likely of the promote the potential promoted teams, um, but I don't think anybody would have picked the Violets to go up automatically. Uh, the spine of the team is probably the best in the division, starting with Kim Das Hall and Gold, who's enjoyed some really outstanding form in the twilight of his career. The talismanic Kim Dong Jin in defence, Kim Jong Wan and Ri Young Jik, also known as the vacuum cleaner in midfield. And at one time they had a quality front three featuring Matthias Oliveira and Yagu playing behind the lone striker, Dan Relay. But a season-ending injury to the Brazilian Dan Relay has robbed them of their best forward, in came Nicholas, and it is uh, fair to say that the replacement number nine has been a major disappointment. Zero goals and zero assists. He actually has more red cards and goal contributions for Anyang since he joined. Um, they have been top since week 10, and next weekend is going to be week 35, and they've been top for a total of 28 weeks so far this season. But familiar old failures uh, look to be haunting the club as they approach the final straight. After beating Ansan Greeners with 10 men, Anyang have now lost three straight and their lead in the summit has been slashed from nine points down to three. In that time, they've also failed to find the back of the net. Uh, is it possible that they're starting to run out of steam? It looks like it. The break did come at the perfect time for the club, though, as they look to rebuild form, confidence, and cohesion before next Sunday's mega home clash with Busan High Park. Win that, and they can head down to Costco and start picking up some of the champagne. But if they lose that, then another famous bottle job in Busan Dong is on the cards. Busan have by far and away the best away record in the league as well, so I don't think they're going to be looking forward to that game too much. Uh, the recent form isn't great, as I said. They've lost all of their last three games by one goal to nil. And just like the Blue Wings have lost three from three against Soliland this season, Anyang have actually lost all three games to the Blue Wings in 2024. Uh, you probably have seen the photographs of the Blue Wings players enjoying uh, packets of cheetahs um, as they rub salt in the Anyang noses. Manager Ru Yang Hoon, look, he came in. He's going to come in for some scrutiny. You'd imagine if Van Yang don't go up automatically. Um, But he arrived, I thought, at a pretty low base. They weren't great last season. Uh, It's hard to argue this season has been very good. Time will tell how crippling the loss of Dan Relay is, but I do think fans have the right to question the continued selection of the completely ineffective Nicholas over Kim Un. I'd give him an 8 to an 8.5 out of 10. Um... In terms of their most important player from here on in, unlike Suwon, this is a more difficult decision. Despite the drop in form, the starting 11 is probably overperforming in almost every position. So it kind of came down to Kim Jong-un in midfield or Matthias Oliveira. Kim Jong-un is a fantastic central midfielder. He's tall, he's good at distributing. 
He's got a good shot on him, but I had to go for the Brazilian uh, Matias, who's got six goals and nine assists in 31 games. In a really weird way, he's probably not selfish enough. I've seen him pass up opportunities to score by setting up other players. Uh, my prediction, look, my heart says they're going to go up. I would love to see them go up because they are my local team, and I want to see Seoul, Ulsan, Pohang, uh, John Buck Motors, I'd imagine, just down the road uh, next season. I think it'd be really cool to see them playing in K League One. But my head says it's playoffs, pit by Busan at the final hurdle. I think it all comes down to next Sunday's game. Whoever wins that game is going to win the championship. I give them a maybe to go up, but I'd be honest with you, I'm erring on the side of another season in K League Two. Well, there we have it. Another season in K League Two for Anyang. Possibly, Michael. Do you? Uh, what do you think? Of? Well, it, it's interesting because th- th- they are free falling at the moment, and psychologically wise, they do lose to Busan and they end up in second room and third place. If Seoul leapfrog them, what's that mentally going to do for them in the playoffs? Mm-hmm. So uh, they've been fantastic all season. You said like from week ten to week thirty-four. Do you say Andrew? I'm not sure. Uh, Thirty-one. Sorry, mm-hmm. um, they've been fantastic, but. If they if they lose out in the last few games of the season, how's that going to affect them in the playoff positions? And, and when when they do come up against Seoul, oh no, it won't be Seoul so or against John and Mosu on whoever makes that cut, are they even going to get to a final against the K League One team? So, me personally, I think they're going to stick. I think they're still going to stay in first. I think they're going to pull it together. I think they're going to scrape a draw against Busan and then just like cruise it to the rest of the season. I think they're still going to go up in first. And, and, and I despise Anyang. I despise them. I don't know how much of that can go out on the podcast. I despise them. But I think that they're still going to go up first automatically. The running is easy after Busan. It's just through Busan, though. If, yeah, that's it. If they can coast to a draw against Busan, then they'll win the rest of the games. Yeah, Matthew. well, I will say... Because I realise if I say no, then I think I'm only saying to Oli go up. Um, I can't remember my picks. Oh, go on then, Michael, because you're here. I'll say Anyang are staying down because I think Busan are going to cause some problems, and Correct. then Busan are going to mess it up. And it's all—I don't know. I don't know. It's such a tight race this year, and but that's why K League Two has been fascinating. <laughs> it's been absolutely uh, riveting stuff, and we will have one more K League Two podcast as we reach the final round. Because um, uh, yeah, well. It's going, to be, it's going to be a completely different complexion and you think I'm getting the league positions wrong now well it's going to be completely different in three weeks time uh, but that's it for this week and so I'd like to thank our guests Andrew and Michael uh, from Michael calling all the way in from Thailand great to have you back Michael and uh, yeah, Andrew calling all the way from Anyang who's obviously <laughs> hoping for K-League 1 teams I'm privileged to be here <laughs> uh, yeah of course Uh, Next week, uh, we'll be back up into K-League 1 Final A, where we're going to be talking about the title contenders and how they're getting on with five games to play. But for now, if you want to follow us, you can do on social, all at K-League United, or you can find all our articles on kleagueunited.com and previews on kleague.com. Also, you can find podcast extras, full-length mix zone interviews. This video you may have also found here. on patreon.com slash kleague united tiers start at three dollars per month uh that's it for this week though uh so from myself michael redmond and andrew farrell thanks so much for listening goodbye Oh!